here we are looking at the rear wheel on a D model penguin. Now this could also be a B model penguin because what we have here in the center is a bolt. In an A model penguin that would probably be a nut holding the wheel on. They changed the axle slightly so that uh, the, on the A models there was a nut and washer and then partway through the A models they changed to a bolt and washer. Now the bolts that hold the rear wheels on one should be tight and the other should be adjusted to set the rear axle bearing preload. So right now we're just taking this wheel off because it is a flat tire. Now there's a couple of different reasons of course why this tire can be going flat. It could be leaking through the valve core, the center of the valve. It could be leaking between the valve and the rim. It could be leaking between the tire and the rim. It could be leaking between the two halves of the rim. Or it could be leaking out through either the cr cracks in the sidewall of the tire or a hole in the tread. Now, I'm not sure where this is leaking, so before I take it off, I'm going to put some air in it because it's much easier to put air in it when it's on the machine because you may have to push and pull and do all kinds of things to get it to take to get it to seat, to get the, the bead of the tire, the edge of the tire to seat so that it, it holds air. So I'm just going to try putting air in it just the way it is. Okay, and luckily it took air. I'm just going to put some air in it until it feels fairly solid. The uh, recommended pressures, I believe, are between 4 and 6 PSI. So I just, I don't want that too hard. You're supposed to put the maximum, I believe, of 15 in these tires. And that was when they're new. And now that they're 50 years old, we should probably try to stay well below that. But anyway, I'm not sure what I've got in that. But that's usually what I run in them anyway. I think I run them a much too high. Now, a handy tool to have when working on these tires, or any tires actually, is a valve tool. It's a tool for removing the valve core or for touching up the threads on the inside of the valve stem and I'm not sure exactly what you use that for uh, and also this thread here fits the, the valve core, uh, stem handy for pulling the valve into the wheel if you're replacing it. But anyway, I don't need to use that right now. So now that we have air in the tire, we're going to remove the center bolt and we need a 3 quarter inch socket and a 6 inch extension. So I'm just going to take this out. This one's not overly tight. So the bolt holds the wheel on and there are four smaller bolts which hold the wheel halves together. So there's the bolt and washer that hold the wheel on. Now, should come off. This has been off in recently, as in the last year or so. So the wheel should just slide off and we'll have to watch there's a piece of key stock in there. <laughs> and I don't have it quite high enough on the trailer to get the wheel out. Got it on the old charge jack here. Just have to look carefully because the jack isn't in the best spot. There you go. The wheel's off the axle. Get the wheel out of the meat machine. There we go. Yes, this would be much easier on the ground with the penguin jacked up on the ground. So we'll just, before we get too far, make sure the key stock hasn't uh, disappeared. It's not in the axle. And it's no longer in the wheel, it fell out of the wheel, so there. So this is what I'm referring to as the key stock. That piece of steel fits in a groove 
in the axle. And there's also groove in the rim hub, which you can't see from this side. Anyway, there's a groove in there, and the key locks the wheel so that it turns with the axle. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is just spray some soapy water on this and see where it bubbles. Before I spray this with soapy water, I'm just going to take a moment and just take a look at it and make sure there aren't any nails or screws or any obvious punctures in it. Just wipe the dirt off of it and just check it. Looks it actually looks like there's a hole there. And it is cracked. It is a 50 year old tire. But I don't see, I haven't already checked this or anything, I don't know that there is or is not a puncture in it. Okay, so I don't see anything obvious. So I'm going to check first. I'm going to spray soapy water, the valve, the feed here, and down in between the rim halves. And all I have is I've got some yellow liquid soap from the kitchen that I put into the spray bottle. Just put a few squirts in there and some water, and I'll just spray it on here. Everywhere, checking. And then I'll let it sit. I'm going to wedge it against the trailer here. I'm just going to do what I can see on the tire without moving the tire. And unless it's a large leak, it may take a few minutes to show up. Now, if you had a... Uh, something large enough to put this in to hold it underwater, like, I don't know, a uh, swimming pool or a... Uh, watering trough maybe you could hold it under water and watch for bubbles but anyway, I'm just gonna let this sit and I'll come back in a moment or two and see if we see any bubbles so the rim and tire have sat for I don't know a minute or two with some air in it and some soapy water on them and I have found the air leaking in a few spots actually now it's not always a nice steady stream of large bubbles you see but here, we'll check the tread now the one spot that I thought there was a hole where it looked like there could be a hole I should say you can see it there it was in the flat spot between the ribs here I was thought it was near that There, there's a hole, or a, there's a mark in the tread, but I spray it with soapy water and I see nothing. There's, there's, there are bubbles, soap bubbles in the hole, but there's no movement of the bubbles. So I don't think any air is coming out through there. Now, one of the thing, one of the places I didn't suggest as a possible leak was the four bolts that go through the rim halves they're like carriage bolts I think they're called elevator bolts or plow bolts elevator bolts I think actually where they go through the rim I noticed on this one here I believe it was that one did appear to be the bubbles did appear to be moving. Well, and it was on. Anyway, it was one of these bolts. And for the air to get there, it would have to leak past the O-ring there. Yeah. Now you probably can't see it. But in there. This is my handy pointing device here. Am I even on camera? Yeah, okay, well, 
probably can't see it from that distance, but right down in here, I can see bubbles forming. So it's leaking around one of the bolts. And if we look at the other side, it makes sense because in order for it to leak at that bolt, it has to leak past the O-ring. And there are also bubbles between the two rim halves where the rims join. And if we look here at the valve, there's very fine bubbles there, which tells me it's got a very small leak between the valve and the rim. You might be able to see it on camera, I don't know, but the, the bubbles around here are moving. So there's air leaking out there. So we have air leaking past the O-ring and air leaking around the valve. So, now before we take the, the, take the four nuts off that hold these wheels, take the wheel halves together, we're going to let the air out of the tire. Because even though there isn't much pressure, if you take those nuts off while there's air in the tire, it uh, it can come apart in a hurry. So I'm just going to take my valve tool and use the core remover and take the center out of the valve core out Should just screw out. And take it right out. So I may take the valve stem out completely and put a new one on here. The valves can get cracked and leak. And maybe corrosion on the rim too. Anyway, unscrew the core. Still unscrewing the core. I'm using my fingers now. So there's the valve core. And sometimes they leak. There's a little seal right there, and sometimes they leak past there. But anyway, that's the core. Flat. Take a half inch socket, use a half inch deep socket, just like an inch a little further, and take these four nuts and washers off of here. The rim is slipping inside the tire. One of the things I use to seal the tire to the rim is grease. On a car, they use an adhesive type sealer because you definitely do not want the tire slipping on the rim. But on these machines, if the tires are glued to the rim, you risk the danger of tearing the sidewall out of the tire. It would be better for the, the rim to slip or the tire to slip on the rim. Since these have no differential in them, if you turn a corner on pavement, something wants to give, and if it, you have a little too much weight in the machine, tires don't want to slip on the pavement, so it wouldn't be a terrible thing for the tire to slip in the rim. There's usually enough pressure between the tire and the rim, enough friction between the tire and the rim because of the air pressure so that the tires don't slip all the time. Like if you're going up a hill, you don't want the tires slipping on the rim. Okay, so we have... I tipped it up to get the wheel nuts from underneath it, and the rim was out. 
So, this is the inner half of the rim. These are the four bolts that hold the wheel halves together. And there's the O-ring that the air must be leaking past. And there is some grease already in there. That O-ring doesn't have any cuts in it. So, what I'm going to try, and there's, I've got grease on this rim too, and it's for some reason it's all gray. But anyway, I'm going to clean the rim, take the O-ring off, clean that too. And the reason I know, well there's two reasons I know the air is getting past this O-ring. The air is supposed to be on he, here on the rim, against the rim on this side, and this this is supposed to keep air from going out. And the stud is between where the air is supposed to be and where we don't want the air to go, so that's supposed to seal it. So the air was going out past these screws and out actually between the two rim halves. So we'll clean this all up and I'm going to put new grease there, new grease here. to lose four nuts and four washers to hold this together. There's the outer rim half and another washer. So we've got two washers. The two washers are there. So there's our valve core. Sorry, our valve stem. And it it doesn't look perfect. <laughs> so I'm gonna pull that out and I'm going to replace it with a new valve and while I have the valve out I'm going to take a wire, a wire brush, not going to go at it too aggressively because we don't want to gouge the hole because we'll end up with an air leak and that's what we're trying to repair so I'll take that valve out and that is gotten very hard so we might have to just cut it anyway I'm going to clean this up and we'll come back and take that valve out of there. While cleaning up the rim, I took a sharp knife and carefully sliced through the valve and removed it. And what I see in the hole is, I don't know if you can see it there, there's powdery residue, there's corrosion in there. So I'm going to clean that carefully with a wire brush just to take that out of there so the valve has a good clean surface to seal on because the powdery residue will be porous which means air can go through it so I'll clean that up and I'm just using some stuff over here in the blue and yellow can to clean that grease off it seems to do a pretty good job the solvents in it take it off so, and I've taken a knife and carefully scraped anything that looked like it might be sticking to this surface here and the mating surface on the other half of the rim to make sure they're clean and I'll clean this out with a wire brush and clean the beads of the tire you can see the gray on the tire too I'll clean that off and when I'm ready to start putting stuff back together we'll come back here okay I think I have everything clean I've cleaned the tire where the rim contacts it. There's still a little bit of grease there but I don't think that's gonna hurt anything and even though I did not find anything puncturing the tire I took a cloth, well in this case a paper towel, and just gently went around the tire to see if there was anything sharp to snag on the paper towel and there wasn't so I'm going to say there was nothing, well there is nothing puncturing the tire like a nail, screw, thorn even. So, so the tire's ready to go. The inside half of the rim cleaned it. Made sure this surface was clean. I cleaned the o-ring, checked it, there are no there are no cuts in it. So it should be fine. I'm not sure why it was leaking past it before. Maybe there was dirt on the rim. Anyway, I'm going to put it back together using that o-ring and see what happens. And there's the 
outer half of the rim with the valve removed and the hole for the valve cleaned. And here are the valves I'm going to use. I'm just going to put one in this. These are just regular car valves. They're an inch and a quarter long and they fit a 0.625 inch rim hole. That's important to watch for because there are different sizes. If you get one that's too small, of course it, it won't stay in place and if you get one too big you'll never get it in place. So anyway, these use a 0.625 valve. So, so the valve comes with a cap which we can remove. And what I also didn't show is I have some grease here. This is some, some, thin, some synthetic grease. It's clear, so it doesn't get us all covered in black or blue grease or whatever color regular grease you happen to use. I'm just going to get use a screwdriver here. A little bit of grease on this valve. Try to set it somewhere, somewhere where it won't get it in grease. So I put a little grease on the valve and I'm just going to spread it around my finger. Could also use tire sealant on the valve, I guess. So we've got our sealer that we're going to use. So we want the valve to go in from the inside out. Do I say that like maybe I've put them in the wrong way? Well, no, but never say never. So what I'm doing is I'm using the valve tool to pull the valve in. So I'm going to screw the valve into the valve tool as far as it'll go. Now, the valve has to go in until this edge right here touches the, the rim. So I'm going to try using a wrench to lift up on the valve tool. This may not work. Just want to use that to oh, get one side in there. You can't really see what I'm doing because I'm struggling with this against my leg. But just using the there. I use the wrench to pry against the valve tool and the valve. Yeah, if we can get it to center stage here. There the valve is in and a little grease oozed out, so the grease will help seal it. So the valve is in. Just taking the valve tool out, put that, put that way up so that it doesn't get dirty. My work surface here isn't very clean. Okay, so what we want to do, and maybe I'll just do this off camera to save battery and your sanity maybe. I'm just going to put a little bit of grease like here, it's right here, in this area, all around the rim. And I'm going to smear some on this face and in this groove where the o-ring goes. I'm going to do the other half of the rim in this corresponding area, like this on the other half of the rim. Then when I have it all greased, I'll come back and we'll put it together. Okay, so I took the inner rim half, applied some grease in this area here. You can't see it very well because it's whitish, clearish. Anyway, I put some there, and what's going to happen is when I put this in the tire, the the bead of the tire, the area that seals, will actually push this down. So, anyway, that's where I put the grease on the, on the rim. Sorry, I put the grease on the inner part of the rim all the way around. I also smeared it all over this flat surface and put some in the area where the o ring's sitting. And this grease down here isn't going to do anything, so... Anyway, that's got grease on it. I'll set that here in the trailer. I'm working in my, in my snowmobile trailer. And this is the outer half of the rim and it's just got grease near where the tire is going to seal on it. And I didn't put any grease here because there's grease on the corresponding half. So, 
first thing we have to do is figure out which way the tire goes. I'm just going to look at the other side of the penguin here. Okay, so looking at the back of the penguin, I have the V facing up. So this is going to go in. So the tire will go on this way. So the tire should go on that way so it matches. And there is actually an arrow on here pointing this way. So the tire is supposed to rotate that way and forward. So looks like I have the penguin tires on this penguin anyway on correctly. Although I don't drive them in mud or have them in water much so it doesn't really matter to me which way the tires go on and actually I think they work better if you put them on backwards to use them in the water. Okay so I have the rim the tire set over the rim but I'm noticing the way the trailers made the rim isn't sitting up as high as it could so I'm just scrambling wondering what I can put under it. Nice clean block of wood. I'm just going to put this underneath. There we go. So the tire is all the way on the rim. Now, when we put this half of the rim on, we have to line these four holes up with the bolts that are there. And the valve is going to want to catch on the bead of the tire. And we've got grease all over everything, so we don't want to wipe that off. As we do this, okay, so there the holes lined up and the valve is slid down in. So now I have one washer still there. So I'm going to reach down in and start a nut with my fingers and find my socket here. Just start the nut on there. washer in and I try to put them in the same way as they came out. And a nut. And these should be lock nuts that are on here so make sure you put them on the right way. Put the locking part of the nut out. Otherwise you might have a hard time starting the nut. There you go. Another washer. Another nut. Another reason this is easier to do off the machine is here you kind of have gravity working with you, sort of. Not dropped in where it doesn't belong. Spot. Screwdriver here. Not off where I can get my hands on it. If I tip the rim over, then I drop the washer. There, I got the nut out. Okay, so those are started. And somehow I still managed to grease all over my hands again. So now I need the ratchets. Put them down. Tighten them all. Let's tighten one really tight. I'm going to tighten them down a little bit at a time. So hold into place here. turning in the tire because of course it's all greased and there's no air in it. I'm just holding the rim here. Get these nuts tight. 
tight. Now, unfortunately, I'm working outside, and it's starting to get dark, so I'm not going to be able to check this for leaks. I'm going to fill it with the tire with air, put it back on the machine, and hope that tomorrow it still has air in it. Taking this to show it at our local cruise night. I like to display the penguins at a local cruise night. I live not too far from where the penguins were actually made in Carlton Place. Sometimes I meet somebody that worked at Pangor or remembers penguins or own a own used to own a penguin. Before I put air in this, I'm gonna take our valve core to her, a tool, a valve tool, and make sure the core in the stem is tight. And it is. So I'm going to put some air in this. And because it's got grease all over the place, it's taking air without needing to be monkeyed around with. If they've been sitting flat a long time and they're out of shape they're not round they're f they've got flat on the bottom so this they're not it's kind of shaped like a Pringles can uh, potato chip where the where the bead is it's hard to get them to take air so, okay, that's not rock hard but it's got a Okay, so we're back with the wheel on the axle. I'm going to try to show this if I can. Okay, so the, I've got the wheel on the axle. I just got it set on part way. And I'm just going to push the wheel on all the way. Now, the back half of the rim works with the axle seal, the bearing seal. So it should go one little farther than it is there. It does feel like it's on all the way. So, the easiest... Now, you can tell I haven't got the key in here because the wheel's turning on the axle. And it shouldn't. So, I'm going to line up the keyway in the axle with the keyway in the rim. Then I'm going to take the key stock and slide it in here. And it should go in place. Push it in a little further with my finger. There, now the key stock is locking the rim the wheel to the axle. Because the other wheel is sitting on the trailer, the axle won't turn. So now I'm going to take a screw that goes in the axle, the bolt. I'm going to put my, just use the extension like a nut driver here and use the extension to tighten it in. Ratchet it on it, slide it down. Now, the axle, I don't know if you noticed, but the axle wasn't completely in the rim. Could be because the penguin has slid a little bit and the axle has moved to the passenger side. So I'm going to tighten this not really tight. There, that's snug. And I put the cap on the on the valve just to keep dirt out. That shouldn't actually hold air in. It's, that's not what it was designed for. It was just designed to keep dirt out of the valve, which would cause it to leak. And I'm going to let this sit overnight. He's on the trailer. I'm taking it to cruise night tomorrow night. I hope it still has air in it. If not, it makes it a real pain in the keister to load it back onto the trailer on the ramps if it's got no air in it. 
Well, we're almost 24 hours later. Tire still holding there. And we are at Carlton Place Cruise Night. So, tire hold there for another couple hours. We'll roll it onto the trailer a lot easier than when it was flat. Here's the tire again. Now it's Saturday morning. The tire's still holding air. So, I guess between cleaning all the ceiling surfaces and reapplying grease and replacing the valve assembly, I've, I don't know if I've cured the leaks, but I've slowed them down to the point where it's now been Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. The, the tire's held air for at least three days, so. So we'll see how much longer it holds there. And one thing I didn't explain was the uh, adjustment of the wheel bearings when you install the rear axle bolt. And I'll just refer to a page in the manual and I'll quote from the manual and hopefully that'll help clear things up a little, possibly. So before I consider this video complete I should go back and touch on the rear wheel bearing adjustment that I mentioned at the start this is uh, a manual or I should say a page out of a manual the manual was produced by uh, Intertech it is a multi make snowmobile and ATV manual uh, Intertech released several versions of this manual, several issues, or several volumes, I guess, and they're all different, so the, this page is not in all of the versions of the manual. I think this is uh, volume one. Anyway, I can confirm that and mention it in the comments or the description of the video. Anyway, this is the only service information outside of the service bulletins and the information in the owner's manuals for the Beaver and Penguin, as far as I know. I have not seen a service manual for either machine, but they're fairly simple machines, but the uh, this manual covers most of what you need to do anyway, although doesn't maybe cover it as well as it could. So, in here, it says adjustment wheel bearings. One rear wheel bearing is used on each end of the common axle shaft and preload is adjusted by tightening the wheel retaining bolts, number nine, bolt in the center, making sure proper alignment of secondary drive chain is maintained. Be careful not to over tighten the bolts. So as you tighten the bolts for the wheels, since they're not tightened down tight, you can actually move the axle in the machine one way or another slightly so the sprocket on the rear axle could move to the left or right slightly uh, throwing it out of alignment with the sprocket on the jack shaft so that's something to watch as you adjust the preload on the rear wheel bearings and it doesn't actually say in here what the preload should be so that's a little bit of, although they provide the information, they don't provide complete information. And while we're looking here, this picture shows the screw and three washers. And if we look at the manual from Pengor, and I find the page with the rear wheel on it, there we go. There's the same picture, I believe. Screw, three washers. It says the screw is a nylock type type I believe that screw should have should be drilled and have a nylon insert in it and they refer to 26 as a fiber washer 24 as a fiber or nylon washer and the 25 as a special steel washer so that's 
what should be in there holding the wheel on and it should be adjusted as per the Intertech manual although the preload I guess is an amount you would have to determine the bearing shouldn't be loose but they shouldn't be really tight and they should be well greased of course anyway if you have any questions about this video your penguin or beaver ATV in general please feel free to ask the questions in the comments below and be sure to check out any other penguin and beaver videos I have there are a few some of them I hope provide useful information any any helpful suggestions con uh, constructive criticism is welcome um, and thank you for watching this video